Hi everyone, it's Melissa and today I'm going to do the book genres tag. Um, the link to the original tag is broken, but I will um, link below Gunpowder Fiction and Plots video and they're the ones who tag me. So thanks for that because this seems like a really fun one. So I've got the questions here. Um, I didn't really prep, but we're just going to wing it. Um, so the idea is there's a bunch of questions and you choose a genre of book to answer the questions about. So I have chosen to answer these questions about horror books. Horror, horror books. <laughs> um, all right, so question number one is um, one of your favorite standalone books. Um, we're gonna go with, I actually have it here. We're gonna go with, and I know this is probably very cliche, but um, The Shining by Stephen King. Um, yeah, it's just what I want in a horror. Unsettling, some psychological stuff mixed in with like, you know, either supernatural or body horror or other things. Like, I like a good psychological um, element to my horror. So um, I think most people are familiar that with this um, well, the book is famous, but probably mostly because of the movie. Um, but if you've seen the movie and have decided that, eh, well, I've seen it, I know the story, so I won't read it, um, I would say the novel is very, very different. I enjoyed the movie, and I enjoyed the novel, but for kind of different reasons. Um, if you're not familiar at all, it's about a man called Jack Torrance and his family. Um, he's an alcoholic and he's struggling to find work. So he takes this job as like the caretaker of this hotel, which like shuts down um, in the off season. So he brings his family to basically like keep care of the hotel um, over the winter. And I think there's some inkling from the very beginning that other caretakers maybe have like gone mad or have not fared well. And you wonder if there might be a supernatural element, like, is the place haunted? Um, and it, it kind of builds very slowly and crescendo, crescendos, sorry, I can't say that word, um, into what I think is a very gripping uh, climax. So I really, really enjoy this. It ends differently than the movie as well. So um, I recommend that. Question number two is one of your favorite series. Have I read? A horror series? I don't think I have. I literally cannot think of a single horror series at all. So I'm gonna say I probably haven't. Goosebumps when I was a kid? Um, yeah, that's the only answer I have for that one. Question three. What is a trope that you like in this genre? Ooh, I like lots of them. I like gothic architecture, um, and kind of like the atmospheric stuff. Um, I think my favorite though, okay, I think my favorite is like, um, driving down a dark, deserted highway. Like, that's probably my favorite, my favorite trope. Um, question four is what is a trope you don't like in this genre? Um, oh, okay. The let's split up trope? Why? Why would you ever do that? If you are in a situation where, you know, you're with a group of friends or acquaintances or whoever, and horrific things are happening, why on God's green earth would you ever separate? And every time I feel like I see this trope, the reason or the excuse used like the ex explanation for them like needing to split up always sounds like it's always so contrived and it's never believable I don't think anyone would act in that fashion no person would ever think like yeah like let's split up and like search the house or search the grounds or like whatever there's never a reason to do that Oh, and then this one isn't as annoying, but I also don't like the trope of like cemeteries in horror because I, this is just a personal thing. The let's split up, I think, is kind of like objectively dumb. 
<laughs> but um, personally, I don't find cemeteries scary. I'm someone who like likes to walk through cemeteries and read headstones, and I find them very um, peaceful, serene, and oddly comforting places. Maybe I'm just a weirdo, but like cemeteries aren't scary to me, so whenever cemeteries are used as like a device to make things spooky, I'm just like, that's not scary. Um, number five is a disappointing book in the genre. Ooh, a disappointing horror. Okay, I've had a think, and I can't think of a, like a horror novel necessarily, but if I kind of expand maybe, um, the limits of that genre and include kind of like ghost stories and stuff in, in that, um, then I would say The Turn of the Screw by Henry James, I think is the author's name. Um, I read this because it was touted as the classic ghost story, right? When I read a ghost story, I'm looking for maybe like a creep factor and not necessarily like a horror factor, if that makes sense. But it just wasn't, it wasn't, I didn't, did not, there was like a couple of scenes that I will admit were like unsettling where I guess I should explain where what it's about but it's a classic novel where this young woman she gets this job as like a governess um so she moves to this like estate to care for the two children and she starts like seeing like people on the grounds and and you're kind of reading are these intruders like are these people who are like trespassing on the grounds or are these ghosts I don't want to give anything away if you want to read it but that's that's kind of like the the basic premise and there were a couple unsettling scenes where like she's like looking out the window and there's like like just this like figure in the distance like walking and it was kind of like ooh, that's creepy but on the whole I just fell really flat and I finished the book and I was just like well that wasn't scary <laughs> ghost story should be scary um and it wasn't scary and I don't think that's like a, oh it was a classic because I've read some classics that are frightening um again in different ways maybe than like modern books but um yeah Turn of the Screw was disappointing number six a book that's on your TBR that you want to get to soon okay so there's two horror books that I really want to get to. The first one, I forget the author's name, but I'll insert a picture, of course. Um, but it's The Only Good Indians. And I've heard a lot of people, um, well, a lot of booktubers who are into horror um, sing its praises. So that one's top of the list. I'll probably be reading that in October. Um, and the other one... I'm almost ashamed to admit I've never read this, but I've never read Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. And I've been wanting to read it for a long time. Um, would you classify this as a horror? I don't know if this is more horror or more character study. Um, or maybe a little bit of both. I'm, I'm not sure. Or maybe it's more science fiction than it is horror. Um, anyway, um, I would like to get to that soon as well. Um, number seven is an intimidating book or series. Um, this is hard to answer because I'm not often intimidated by books. Sorry, my cat. We're going to let her in. Okay, hopefully that cuts down on the meowing. Okay, so number seven was intimidating book. Um, yeah, I am not often intimidated by books. Um, but that was a mistake. Okay, get it. I will say there's one book that I really do want to read. It's been on my list for a long time. Everyone says it's really good. And maybe I am slightly, not necessarily intimidated, but like scared to read and that's Beloved by Toni Morrison. Um I I do believe this is horror like literary horror so I think I can count this and I don't think 
I mean, you can skip ahead if you don't want to hear anything, but I don't think this is um, a spoiler because I think it's pretty well known that there is like, I don't know if it's child murder or abuse, but bad things happen to a child in the book and children getting hurt or killed makes me like kind of beyond uncomfortable. Um, I'm very, very sensitive to child suffering to the point where um, it'll swirl in my head for like weeks and maybe even months. So when I know that's in a book, it's something that I kind of have to almost like prepare myself for. So that's one that I, I wouldn't call that maybe intimidated, but I am I'm kind of scared to read that um, because of child suffering. Um, number eight is what is another book genre? Sorry, I read that weird. Uh, number eight is what is another book genre you want to read more of? Um... I'm going to say science fiction. Science fiction is actually one of my favorite genres, I would say, but I just haven't picked it up very much this year. Um, and then before this year, I wasn't um, reading much for like many years. Um, so yeah, I, I do love science fiction, but I just haven't read much of it lately. I think I've only read maybe I don't know, a couple of books this year that you would, you could qualify as science fiction. So, um, because it's a genre I really love, I would like to start uh, picking up more of it. Um, number nine, what book genre intimidates you the most? Um, again, I'm not really intimidated by books or by a specific genre. Like I will read pretty much anything. Um, so maybe I'll change the question because I, I will not watch anything. Um, I am uh, intimidated by horror movies. Um, so it might sound weird that I've chosen horror for my book genre. Um, but I do not watch horror movies unless they have been basically vetted by someone I trust um, so that I can be assured that there's no gore um because it's the the gore and body horror that really um does it for me I don't do this like portrait portrait <laughs> torture porn nonsense um I will read truly horrendous things but I I think I'm just a very visual person um and so yeah I I'd say I steer clear of about 90% of horror movies that are out there so question 10 is to tag people. Um, uh, I didn't look and see who did this tag already. I probably should have, but I will tag a couple people. Um, Keely from, I forget your channel's name, Bibliophile, Bibliophile's Journey. Um, Amanda from The Curly Reader. And Jen... Uh, from Jen the Librarian. I will tag you. I will also tag anyone who's watching this who would like to do this tag. So that's it. That's the book genres tag. Um, it was a lot of fun. I hope everyone uh, enjoyed this and thanks for watching. We'll talk soon. Take care. Bye.